mind power you are listening to your number one career podcast everything you need to know to have a great career and now your host ladies and gentlemen welcome to our second episode right here at the mind power career top podcast i am your host Emmanuel Chisalu, certified career analyst, expert CV writer, job search strategist, and professional CV writer. Today on the show, we are featuring a prolific, exciting, and qualified individual who is going to take us through the process of crafting an interview winning CV. Ladies and gentlemen, stand by as I introduce to you Sibeso Kumwenda, HR outsourcing specialist, talent acquisition specialist, HR professional and practitioner, employment contract designer. Wow, contract designer. Okay, we'll hear more about the contract designing and drafter, member of the Zambia Institute of Human Resource Management, LLM, she will explain what that means, employment and labor law, labor law consultant. Shall you all join me in welcoming Siveso Kumwenda on the Mind Power Career Talk podcast episode number two. <laughs> Hi, Sibeso. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. And yourself? Good. I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is all mine. I think we, we have been conversating, I think, for, for the past few months. Yeah. Uh, on how you and I we could create this collab mm -hmm. to have um, a podcast primarily uh, focused on 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 uh, job search yeah. interview preparedness mm -hmm. uh, cv writing and everything that chips into a job seeker mm -hmm. landing what i would call their dream job yeah yeah otherwise it's awesome to have you thank you right on the mind power career talk podcast thank you it's amazing i'm super excited <laughs> You made oh. me wait months, but hey, here we are. <laughs> Look, I mean, life happens. You know, the time that I thought we could meet, have this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, had travels in between, uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. But uh, regardless of that, I think it didn't, it, it, it didn't take much of a time. No. Yeah. Uh, here we are this evening, mm -hmm. uh, shooting this podcast. And this podcast... You know, for me, within within my spirit, within my my, my practice as a career guidance coach, mm -hmm. uh, career analyst, and also an expert CV writer, mm -hmm. it's something that's going to help job seekers out there yeah. who have been beating themselves to death, mm -hmm. thinking how terrible their CVs are. So we have someone who has reviewed millions. Have you reached mm. millions yet? <laughs> Probably past millions. Past millions, right? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> now, someone who's passed millions of CVs falling on a desk, mm -hmm. scanning them, reviewing them, uh, separating the sheep from the goat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to use that terminology. <laughs> I know we know what that means, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Sibeso, before we dive into our conversation on how one could create an interview winning CV mm -hmm. from a perspective of, of, of someone like you who's been practicing as yeah. a hiring manager, talent acquisition manager, mm -hmm. in short, to understand human resource issues. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm Sibeso, Sibeso Kubwenda, uh, currently in uh, recruitment. I'm a talent acquisition specialist. This simply means 
I am able to identify talent. So from mm. the millions of CVs that <laughs> come in, <laughs> yeah. it is my job to spot out the talent in those CVs. Okay. And then until recently, I have currently been placed in charge of HR outsourcing. Oh, brilliant. Yes. So I am currently with uh, KSM Management Consultants. Okay. And it is a consultancy firm, recruitment firm, basically. Okay. So I'm under recruitment. This is where we recruit on behalf of clients. And uh, in terms of HR outsourcing, this is where we provide HR services to clients. Mm, mm. So instead of you having to have um, an entire HR department, it becomes costly. Maybe you have 10 people and you're paying each of them a salary. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. we advocate for is why not give us that task? Yeah. Let us do it for you. Let us manage your payroll. Let us manage your recruitment. Let us do all of this. And then you pay us basically half of what you'd be paying all of these employees. Ah, yeah. So wow. that's HR outsourcing. And then I'm an HR practitioner. Okay. I've been practicing HR for five years now, mm -hmm. clocking my 60th year this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. And I'm a, a labor law student. That's wow. the LLM on my... Oh, okay. Yes. Labor law student. Yes. So I'm currently <laughs> a, a master's student. Oh. I am pursuing uh, employment and labor law. Uh -huh. which is where the contract designing and contract drafting comes in. Wow. Because I am specialized to design a contract, an uh -huh. employment contract, as per what the law requires. Yeah. So what should be in a contract according to the law? What, okay. is, what should be stated in this agreement between an employer uh -huh. and an employee? Yeah. So I have basic understanding of labor law. I have uh, in-depth understanding of, of all these conventions and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's the LLM. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> shall we put up a round of applause to Sibia Sokumwenda for that powerful introduction? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Now, uh, here is me. Uh, mm -hmm. When you talked about payroll management, uh, mm -hmm. talked about uh, um, you know, contract, and contract management, contract drafting. Yes. So I have uh, one of my guys mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So he tells me uh look sir it's month end yes the babies at home are crying we need to put mm. food on the table yes when are you processing <laughs> the payroll so we found the right person to yes, do the job to do the job <laughs> he, he won't even have to come to you and say my salary is no 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 yeah. we handle the entire procedure even when it comes to it goes all the way down to negotiations okay when it comes to employees having uh, issues that they need to be raised uh -huh. and then there's companies that may not want to involve themselves in that entire process all so right. that's where we also come in and do the union negotiations for you Brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. So my team, you've really helped. Uh, yes. Do, don't come to me. Anything <laughs> else, right through CBSO. Yes, yes. You do the negotiations, mm -hmm. the agreement and all that. Yeah. All right. So now, CBSO, let's run through quick um, how to craft an interview winning CV. Mm -hmm. From your perspective as a human resource practitioner, mm -hmm. but most importantly, talent acquisition manager. Yeah. What do you look for in a CV at the first glance? At the first glance? Mm -hmm. Let me start by laying a disclaimer. Okay. All of the views that I'm going to give here are my views. Based on my experience, I'm uh -huh. not speaking on behalf of uh, fellow recruiters. Okay. I'm speaking on my behalf. All right. So I will start by saying there's no ideal CV. Mm. No. Really? With me, what I am going to look at, first thing I'm looking at is because for you to have applied, there's basically qualifications and all those things that have been set out yeah. that, need, that you need to have. Uh -huh. So the first thing I'm looking for is, do you have the experience? Mm -hmm. Do you have the education? And mm -hmm. experience is wide. You don't necessarily just have to have work experience. Okay. Do you have experience related to what I have advertised for? All right. That is the first thing I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And are you qualified in the sense that have you studied the mm -hmm. program that I have set out to be part of the qualifications that I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. So for me, that, that's the first thing that, that catches my eye. Like, do you have the education? Do you have the experience? Do you have the qualifications? Mm -hmm. And of course, your grammar mm -hmm. is your English uh, to the point. How are your spellings? <laughs> With me, the, uh, my colleagues call me... Uh, the human dictionary, so to say. Really? Because I have an eye for all of these, the, the 
how have you set out your grammar uh-huh. is uh-huh. there a comma where there should be a comma have you put a full stop where there should be a full stop okay. so all of those things come into play and how is your layout how have you lay out your experience have you started with your most recent experience how have you set out all these all of these things so all those are part of the things that i look for that's a detailed overview mm-hmm. of 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 what a human resource practitioner of course uh, practicing in um, acquiring yeah. talent, talent yes for for different institutions or mm-hmm. organizations mm-hmm. uh today's job market has become really competitive it has <laughs> i think 10 years ago or 20 years ago it wasn't difficult for people who were seeking opportunities at that time mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. while you were still in college or university, you had actually employers fighting for you. Yes, yes, that's yeah. true. Uh, I've interacted with a number of, 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 of senior citizens mm-hmm. who actually you know, told me that, look, the time when I was in university, first of all, there was ZNS scrambling mm-hmm. for me. The time I left ZNS, uh, went to University of Zambia. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I could even complete my studies, there were employers with different offers. Waiting. Waiting, <laughs> actually. At the same time, mm-hmm. there were also uh, different inter- international organizations mm-hmm. offering lucrative scholarship opportunities mm-hmm. uh, for us to go abroad, yeah. you know, further our education, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So really for us, a CV at that time never mattered. Yeah. But today, it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, you know, statistically, we have more than 400,000 graduates. Exactly. That's a lot. Annually. It's a lot. And the labor world mm-hmm. within Zambia, for instance, is able to absorb right about 50,000. So it means that 350,000... Are unaccounted for. Unaccounted for. So what practical steps Mm -hmm. should one take in order for them to be employment ready Mm -hmm. and have their cv considered in this competitive environment Mm -hmm. by hiring manager i like that question because i once wrote i think i once wrote an article on my linkedin about how graduates today are very ready to apply Uh for work but they're not really ready to work yeah yeah. they feel like just because i have graduated i can easily put bachelor in this on my cv and that will get me that will get me qualified yeah but then it comes down to what are you doing to get noticed prior Mm -hmm. to that Mm -hmm. so you you will uh, have a cv that you may not have much experience yeah but you could focus in having all these uh small 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 trainings that you could do focus on for example leadership training yeah or excel because all these are things that are preparing you for the job market uh-huh. when you get employed there's maybe uh, software that you would have to use say you have to use excel and you have to use all of these other things mm-hmm. so prior to that i feel like graduates can decide to focus on doing all of these small courses mm-hmm. and then find a way to just place them in their cv that will prove to us as employers to say this is a person that is ready to do this yeah. and then prior to that also be ready like mindset okay. just prepare yourself to say i have to work uh-huh. So things like punctuality will have to come to play because yeah. I, I can't be late for work. Mm-hmm. Be ready to work. Don't just be ready to just set out a CV and then you get hired and then what now? Yeah. You don't know what to do. You, you, you don't have computer skills. You don't have ICT skills. You don't know how to use Excel. You don't know how to use Word. You do not know how to react to criticism when a boss has, has criticized you. So it's all these little, little things that you need to uh, prepare yourself mentally so mm-hmm. that by the time you do get the job, then everything that just flows in. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's very incredible. Shall we give you a round of applause yes. for hitting <laughs> the nail on top of its head? Yeah. This is Mind Power Career Talk Podcast where we bring you hiring managers, corporate executives, business leaders. Mm-hmm as they share their experiences and personal stories when it comes to recruitment and also career planning, development, and management. Sibeso, you've touched on very important issues, which I feel sums up 
the entire conversation. Now let's build up yeah. on the key points that you've raised right through this conversation. Mm-hmm. As a hiring manager, as a talent acquisition specialist, or as a person really mm-hmm. who understands the human resource landscape, what then should a candidate, this could be a graduate, mm-hmm an early career professional mm-hmm. or someone who's already been in the corporate world yeah. but they're seeking for other employment opportunities. Mm-hmm. What should they put into perspective when structuring their CV? In this case, are you moving for, for growth or is it just in a case where you are already practicing? Yes. What's the reason why you want to move? So uh, there are two situations, mm-hmm. all right, which breaks down this question. Yeah. The first one is you're looking for a job. Mm -hmm. Like you just want a breakthrough. You want to gain your grounding, Mm -hmm. have an entry level position, Mm -hmm. and then begin building from there. So we have this candidate who is a graduate, Mm -hmm. straight from university. They want to establish themselves. Mm -hmm. We have another candidate who's been in the corporate world. Yeah, who's already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So now they're looking for growth. Mm But uh, with this biting economy, at the same time, <laughs> they're, looking, yes. they're looking for lucrative opportunities yeah. uh, that could e- increase their income earning, mm-hmm. which could give them more freedom in terms of their expenditure, savings, mm-hmm. and other engagements mm-hmm. with their income. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, in short, let's just put it in a bracket that all of them are just looking for lucrative employment opportunities okay. that would enable them, uh, one, gain their foot into the corporate world, mm-hmm. at the same time, grow, mm-hmm. earn, and progress. Okay. Yeah. So let me start from uh, a graduate perspective. All right. As I had mentioned earlier, focus on what skills you can have. Because as a graduate, you don't have much experience. And mm. I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. Okay. I graduated and did not have much experience. And it's difficult in an economy where every job is requiring you at least have even one to two years mm. work, with, work experience. Right. So in a case where you do not have experience, you focus on what skill value you can attain yeah. prior to, to gaining that experience. Certain jobs require you to have skills of um, teamwork, for example. Mm-hmm. So place yourself in situations where you work on your teamwork abilities you work on your communication abilities. If you have to do voluntary work, do voluntary work so that that is added on to your CV. Mm -hmm. But it's basically all these small, small courses that you can add to your CV that can give you, that can give you ground. And then find a way to phrase them professionally that you will have an employer like one of my previous employers who will take a chance on you despite not having that experience. Experience, Yes. And then speaking now from a level, from a already experienced person, Uh As you had mentioned, there's many reasons why people are applying for, for employment. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to structure your CV in line with what you want to gain. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of experience. There's no need for you to place all this entire experience. Say you are uh, applying for a job as a project manager. Yeah, yeah. You want to move up. You have to put experience and skills that are related to what you are applying for. Mm-hmm. If you have a teacher, a, t- a teaching experience, there's yeah. no need for you to place that in your CV because it does not relate to the project manager position. Okay. And then the key is on, I have noticed this, mm-hmm. I think maybe even my fellow recruiters will speak. I have noticed a system where people, especially those already practicing, now I'm speaking from an element of people who are already working. Yeah. I have noticed a habit or a mentality of picking what your job description from your contract, mm-hmm. you pick that entire thing and then you paste it <laughs> on your CV. Task based. No, 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 no. So that is not what we are not, as a recruiter, if you are practicing, we are not looking for, yes, we're interested in what, what tasks did you have to do, but yeah. our main focus in, is what was your success on that particular position? Wow. What was your achievement on that particular position? What were you able to achieve on that particular position. Say, for mm. example, you join a company. Yeah. I join a company as human resource, uh-huh. and then maybe human resource assistant or yeah. human resource officer, and uh-huh. I'm applying for human resource director. Yeah. Definitely on my position as human resource officer, what I am going to 
place as an accomplishment or what should stand out for me to get to that position as director yeah. is a state where maybe I decreased the turnover rates mm-hmm. by 15%. Mm-hmm. For example, if I joined the company, we had too many employees leaving, so I introduced all these incentives like employee of the month where we were awarding employees. And uh, we had all these uh, activities like team teamwork activities. Mm. So with that, I was able to increase, decrease rather the labor turnover rate yeah. by 15%. So yeah. employees were no longer leaving just because. Now employees were either leaving maybe because uh, it's situations beyond their control yeah. or it's obviously a competitive package. That's why they're leaving. Wow. So it's, it's all of these little things. Focus on what, what are you bringing to the table? The table. Exactly. As a recruiter, <laughs> that is why I am looking at your CV. Yes, you have all these. Uh, give a brief description of what you were doing. Yeah. I, was, I was filing this. I was dealing with this. But in as brief as it is, focus now on the achievements and on the successes. What did you achieve in that position? Yeah. What were you able to bring to the table in that position? Because then you are convincing me to say even when I bring you on, uh-huh. there's certain incentives and other things that you'll be able to bring to the table. Mm. So mm. that's for those already in employment, that should be their focus. Avoid picking job descriptions from your contracts Copy and then and just paste. pasting. You don't even understand your own job description. <laughs> so now when we come and interview you and then we're telling you to say your CV says you are oh doing this, word. you uh, don't know uh. how to. Yes. So it's easy for you to relate to a CV if you know what you're talking about. Mm. I have place to say I reduced the labor turnover by this. It's going to be very easy for me to even explain it because it's something that I have achieved. Achieved. Exactly. Naturally, mm-hmm. exquisitively, phenomenally, <laughs> you've just hammered the nail on top of, it, top of its head. Mm-hmm. Now, brilliant. Yeah. Now, you see, uh, I have been telling my clients, mm-hmm. of course, I've been practicing as a certified career analyst. Okay. Uh, most importantly, I've, I've written uh, thousands of CVs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with um, you know great success stories. Okay. Which I would share from time to time on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. No, you you are my connection on LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah, yes. Of, of course. You're doing you good work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you've, yeah. you've you've seen all those success stories and the like. Mm-hmm. So, I told myself, uh, what is it? of you as a candidate repeating your job description Mm -hmm. on your cv Mm -hmm. when me as a hiring manager i want to pick out your value preposition exactly see how you are going to help me solve Mm -hmm. my current problems Mm -hmm. or capitalize Mm -hmm. on the market opportunities Mm -hmm. so i tell my uh, my clients look uh, when you come to me as I'm transforming your CV, mm-hmm. I'm not a cookie cutter. Yeah. I'm not going to copy and paste. Exactly. And just add some colors, change the design. Mm-hmm. I'm going to drill down with you. I want to find your value. Yeah. What do you bring to the party? Mm-hmm. All right. Because mm-hmm. when I invite you for the party, I don't expect you to come empty handed. Exactly. All right. Mm-hmm. Come with charcoal, come with meat, come with uh, some drinks, so on mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. So, what are you bringing to excite? Mm the party exactly what are you bringing to the team Mm -hmm. and just to add on to to what you're saying it makes a lot of sense in the sense that when we as recruiters place a job ad yeah yeah yeah. we have maybe a description of what we expect you to do Mm -hmm. so it's pointless for you to come and copy and paste the job description from whatever you're doing Mm -hmm. just trying to link it to say okay this is what i'm doing currently so i'm able to do that yeah no so you're supposed to find a way which is why i always believe for every job that you're applying for Mm -hmm. have a different cv do not use one cv for every job you you just keep no it doesn't make sense generic cv no 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 no, no. <laughs> not allowed so at you're all. supposed to yeah. find a way yeah. where you pick out job descriptions are pasted on on job adverts yeah. so pick yeah. out what it is that that recruiter is looking for and then mm-hmm. in your cv state how you are able to meet that by yeah. what you have already done which comes back to the to your achievements and whatnot yeah. because then you would be able to say on the first point you're looking for someone that can do this i can do this because i have done this mm-hmm. not i can do this because it's what i'm currently doing or this is my current job position no i can do this because i was able to achieve this through certain things that i have done awesome mm-hmm. awesome now based on uh, this session and this is something very important because mm-hmm. look every Every CV that I have written that has come through my way, mm-hmm. 
it has been responsibility or task heavy mm-hmm. like a repetition of your expectation yeah because serious so when i share the job description that's a set of expectations yes what yes. i expect you to do to do mm-hmm. now that you have the job how have you applied how are you going to do what i expect yeah, you to exactly. do not that you're just sitting there and doing what i've told you to do no absolutely mm-hmm. so then how best can one format and illustrate their experience on their cv to demonstrate their value proposition hmm. just just as you have stated what yeah. is your value uh-huh. what are you bringing to the table first and foremost format format in your experience start from uh, definitely start from your most uh, recent experience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then descend down to to previous experiences yeah. but you are focusing on yeah basically what you said what you are bringing to the table mm-hmm. yes in your previous experiences you're going to talk about this is what i did this is what i was able to achieve and then phrase it in such a way that the cv speaks to the current position that you're applying for Absolutely. To say in as much as I have this previous experience, this previous experience meets mm. me in this particular way. Mm. Yeah, so you have to to find a way to just professionally phrase it and catch the eye of a recruiter. All right. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Now, you and I are both on LinkedIn. Yes. And you know, uh <laughs> LinkedIn is one of uh, a, a prolific um an exciting social media platform it is where you find people doing amazing things mm-hmm. at the same time it's attracted different career coaches mm. hiring managers CV or writers. cv writers <laughs> all around the world mm-hmm. okay so each one of them is giving different pieces of advice to job seekers yeah all right mm-hmm. uh I must be quick to mention that this industry of CV writing and career coaching is not regulated. Mm-hmm. So if today I woke up and say, oh, "Okay, let me let me just start writing CVs," no one will come to me and ask for my certification mm-hmm. or licensing. Yeah, yeah. But there are some of us who are deliberate, who've gone ahead, you know, just to 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 enhance our credibility, mm-hmm. so that we instill that confidence and trust in our clients. Uh, they could come through to us interact with us and we mm-hmm. could work on their documents because we have the necessary certification on or licensing yeah to back what you're doing absolutely mm-hmm. so the different sets of advice on linkedin some will tell you a cv should just be one page <laughs> others will tell you it must be two pages <laughs> others will tell you it doesn't doesn't matter how it many it can be as long as you want for as long as you're communicating the necessary <laughs> pieces of information Information. that Mm -hmm. would increase your employability Mm -hmm. now from your perspective as a person who is into hiring Mm -hmm. all right how long should the cv be this is why i was very quick to to mention at the beginning to say there is no ideal cv Uh employers vary okay organizations vary yeah yeah but then when it comes to a cv if you're a graduate, mm. recent graduate, obviously you don't have much to write. Yes, so yes. A, a one-page CV is, is fine. It, mm. It's enough as long as you highlight your basic skills and, and all of that yeah. for a graduate. For someone who is currently in employment, I feel three to four pages is enough. Okay. Because this is why I've stated to say stop the habit of picking job descriptions from your previous jobs. Because this is what prolongs a CV. Mm. So if you're going to be specific and just speak out your successes and what you were able to achieve, you will find that even in each job uh, slot, you mm. have very little to write. Mm. So I think three to four pages should be enough. Ten yeah. pages is a lot. I recently came across a CV <laughs> with ten pages. Recruiters do not have time. You are better. To I had read. one. I had one twenty pages. Ha, no, 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 no. Yeah. That is too much. We yeah. do not have time to read a 10 page cv Mm -hmm. because we are we are looking for just those things that will speak to us when we just look at your cv does they do they have the skill Mm -hmm. do they have the qualification what do Mm -hmm. they bring to the table what contributions have they brought to the current company those are the things that we are looking for so if you're going to give me a 10 page cv in a pool of 1000 applications i will Mm -hmm. not have the time to read Mm -hmm. so three Mm -hmm. to four pages should be enough for someone who is currently in employment employment and a page should be enough for a graduate now talking about 
about um, what you've just stated, mm -hmm. three to four pages for someone who is in employment. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, we have senior career professionals. Yeah. All right. So is it necessary for them to include every bit of their experience from job to job that they've been? No. Oh, brilliant. You have to focus on... I think some of these things are just... It's, it's basically the same thing over and over again. What are you applying for? Okay. What is the position that you're applying for? So uh -huh. if all these other... I refuse to believe you'll be in a situation where you're applying for a job and then all oh, your previous... What is that most... The, the experience that mostly speaks to what you're about to do? Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So I don't, I don't really think... Other recruiters may say otherwise, but in my... In my view, I really don't think, because with me, I'm only going to be looking at the experience that relates directly to what I'm about to recruit you for. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and for me, this has been my, my, my learning experience, uh, mm -hmm. more special that I'm a certified career analyst. Ha, yes. And also, <laughs> I, I belong to the Society of Elite Resume Writers of the United States of America. Okay. So, the key objective of a CV is to communicate to the hiring manager. Yes why you are a suitable candidate out of everybody else why must i pick you exactly yes so if you worked as a plumber uh when you were starting up uh -huh. in your professional thank you yes Keep and going. then <laughs> you go to university mm -hmm. uh, you become an accountant yes then why should you include your plumbing profession no. If, you, if, if if unless you're telling me to say despite going to that uh despite <laughs> you doing that accounting job the current yeah. position you're applying for is for a plumber for a plumber then you leave it on yeah but if going forward you had this uh, plumber experience mm. and then you did your accounts and then you are applying for anything accounts related going forward yeah then that's not relevant we're not hiring you as an accountant to come and do plumbing yeah no so that then it has to it has to be cut off so all these little things are what even reduces your CV because you will find when you are drafting a CV to meet what you're applying for, mm -hmm. you will find there's a lot of other experience that is irrelevant to what you're currently applying for. Mm. So you will drop your CV to two to three pages and in that sort, which is why recruiters even emphasize to say your CV should be brief. Unless in a case where a recruiter says your CV should be detailed, detailed. Uh -huh. then you, you can leave it. But we are not saying detailed in the sense that you still leave the plumber experience. Uh -huh. You remove that experience, but try and detail all other experiences that are related to what you're applying for. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Sibeso Kumwenda, who is dropping some jams some bombs some missiles everything everything actually whatsoever <laughs> you think of calling it yeah we are having an amazing conversation right here of course we are looking at uh, the first primary thing uh, before you are invited for an interview mm -hmm. before you are um, recruited mm -hmm. i think hold another thing is constant the first primary document that gets you in is your cv, is your CV. so the whole discussion is centered around, first of all, understanding the anatomy mm -hmm. of crafting an effective and interview winning CV. Mm -hmm. And we are hearing from someone who's got massive experience in this industry, sharing her own perspective as to what fits in to be an interview winning CV. There's one problem mm -hmm. with, 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 um, the way technology has disrupted our environment, more especially recently uh, with um, the COVID pandemic, yeah. there has been a lot of online training programs. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, uh, because of the lockdown, we were told to stay home at some point. Mm -hmm. So trying to beat mental health, the boring aspect of just staying at home. Yeah. We just enrolled for almost anything that <laughs> could like caught our eye. Anything that pops up. Yes, yes. So I've seen a client who's come to me with one and a half page of mm -hmm. different professional trainings, workshops, conferences that they've attended. So in working on their CV, I told them like, look, uh, how are these trainings connected to the job that you're okay. applying for? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. I said, no, everything is, is, is connected. I tried to, 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 to cut down the excess fat. Yeah. Uh, the client busted me right in my face, say, no, please put everything. everything. So as a hiring manager, 
is it every training is it every conference is it every workshop that i've been to mm-hmm. that i need to include on my cv i really don't believe I, i i don't believe so because just as you have stated yeah it, uh, trainings come down to it's the same as job experience mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so if you if you have a training that you have done that is related to the job you are applying for that even comes up as a bonus okay to say they've, they've attended this training yeah but then just like i have said recruiters will not have time to look at everything in your cv mm-hmm. so if i spot out that one training that is related to the job you are applying for it's very rare that i will pay attention to all the other trainings that you have done yeah so why not just focus on that particular training and relate it to the job that you are applying for i really don't think it's necessary to place all trainings in one in one cv unless in a case where now you just have one generic cv yeah so you are not editing it as per your job uh, that you are applying for so mm-hmm. you are just sending one cv and saying you know what whatever comes up comes up then you can leave them But in a case where you are applying for a specific position, then your training should be related to what you are applying for. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Now, Sibeso, there's another debate. All right? Now, <laughs> this one, this one primarily focuses on the contact details section or personal Aha, personal information. Personal information. CD. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, I don't know like okay look we've grown up mm-hmm. knowing mm-hmm. that your CV should capture your name mm-hmm. all right so you have your first name mm-hmm. the next bullet your, your other name. names <laughs> another bullet your mm-hmm. surname mm-hmm. when you were born mm-hmm. where you were born from mm-hmm. which village you come from ah. <laughs> okay your okay. your religious beliefs mm-hmm. I think you've encountered such kind of things. I have. I have. All right. Your your sexual orientation, whether you're male or female. Mm-hmm. Your marital status, whether you're married or single. Mm-hmm. Um uh, what else? Uh, national registration, identity. So some would include their either their NRC, NRC numbers number. or passport numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, some would go ahead and also include their you know driving license number. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah and others will go ahead and include their tribe or the languages that they're able to speak. Mm-hmm. Now is that information necessary on a CV? For the languages that you are uh, able to speak, I think such information comes in handy in a case where you're applying for jobs to do with research. Okay. Because then maybe they would be asking you to say what what languages are you able and then there's other jobs that will state to mm-hmm. say must be able to speak certain languages. Yes. So in a case where you're applying for such a job, then it's fine to leave to leave the languages because you're proving to the recruiter to say you had advertised that I need to speak these languages and mm-hmm. these are the languages I can speak. Okay. So then it 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 becomes relevant. Mm-hmm. But in terms of things like um age and uh sexual orientation on that one I'm a bit I'm a bit hesitant because I I try to discourage against it mm-hmm. because there's issues of discrimination. Mm. The last thing you want is to d- be discriminated based on your age before you even get anywhere. Like yeah. your CV is just looked at and the first thing they say is ah we no mo chani. No, we oh. can't we can't get this person. Wamu wamu kolonyo wamu yesi. He is retiring <laughs> soon so what what value is he going to bring to to yeah. the organization? So I try uh-huh. to discourage against it. All right. When it comes to b- things to do with your your age and your sexual orientation the last thing you want is to and it does happen i'm mm-hmm. not speaking from without it does happen that you could be in a situation where you are discriminated against based on your age yeah and you are dis- uh, and according to labor law it, it's not supposed to happen which mm-hmm. is why i'm even studying this to begin with to have a proper understanding of all these legal things that should be able to guide mm-hmm. so legally it it is not even advisable to have a person should not be discriminated based on their sexual orientation based on their race based on their age so i feel like placing some of these things is bound to place you in a position where you're discriminated against mm-hmm. and even in situations where you could be discriminated against for being female yeah to say females have too many holidays there's mother's, mother's day, day pregnancy there's day maternity <laughs> leave yeah so there's there's things like that so yeah. i feel like you, you do not place yourself in a position where you're discriminated against before you even get to the interview mm-hmm. at least mm-hmm. get to the interview and impress the panel so okay. that it 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 gets to a point where they will not even think to say oh we can't hire them because they're female because you've impressed yes. at the end of the day we we'll just say you know what in as much as she is female mm. she's the only candidate that has stood out so we have we have no choice but we just have to hire her So for me I feel like certain things should not 
sexual orientation, mm. I'm reluctant. I really don't think it's it's appropriate to place it there. Mm. Same applies to putting your picture on your CV. Uh, that, that, that was actually my next question. What if you're discriminated against for being light? Oh, this person is dark. For I, I can't... For being the color Jojo. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I don't know. I, even with that one, I have, uh, I have mixed feelings. And then the reason I have mixed feelings is because at the end of the day, again, yeah. Applicants do not choose what mm. CVs. There's others that have gone the professional way and put a professional picture there and it looks very neat and it, it portrays this professional element. And then there's others that just go and put out any picture that is there. Actually, one that I saw, someone got mm -hmm. a picture with their grandmother and they were posing. That. You've seen. So <laughs> in, in that case, then it becomes like, irrelevant. Why? Why? Yes, why must you? So even with that one, that's why I'm a bit, I'm 50-50 I'm because there's others that do put professional pictures and then it looks it looks really clean. Mm -hmm. And then there's others that do not know what picture to put. They'll just put, they take a selfie and then they put and then it doesn't, it doesn't look professional at all. So there's those things. I think recently, if mm -hmm. uh, you saw what I shared on LinkedIn, uh, um, one thing that I must appreciate, I think, uh, first of all, it's our consistent engagement. Yeah. Um, where I followed through everything that you share, <laughs> um, you know, chipping with comments. Yeah, yeah. And where I'm so held up just to agree with you, I'll just pop in yes. um, a reaction mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was laughing with uh, with my team. Uh, you know, there was there was there was a CV that we saw, which was you know circulating on social media. And they media. do a lot of those, hey? Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of CVs on LinkedIn, which looked yeah. like a barrier program. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like they come a flower there, yeah, and someone they put their picture and then they decorate it with flowers. I know. No, so no. I was like. <laughs> Has this person gone to meet their creator? Mm -hmm. oh, Why my. is it there? You see? Then at the bottom, I saw curriculum vitae. I was like, to hell with that. Like, like they've labeled it yeah. to say curriculum vitae. vitae. For me, if I was a hiring manager, <laughs> even if you had, you know, the content that you've shared, which is supposed to feature into an interview winning CV, but at a glance, if this is what you gave me, mm -hmm. I would automatically reject. Huh, you, need to, you need to meet my colleague. I have these <laughs> conversations with, with him all the time because he would, I would be sitting there, I'm shortlisting CVs, and this yeah. CV has basically everything that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But then that one thing, if there's just that one mistake, it yeah. automatically just puts me off. Mm -hmm. For example, your CV should either be typed, yeah. not even either, it should be typed, typed. and right. saved either in uh, Word format or in PDF, PDF format. All right. But when you're saving it in PDF format, please uh -huh. professionally scan it. Uh -huh. Do not capture it on your phone and then scan and save it to PDF. And then it's, it's, it's showing where the, the certain angle is folded. The, uh, it either has I wrinkles to, or it has I, lines. I want you to repeat that. Do not scan your CV like that. So mm. I've, had, I've had situations where I would even speak to my colleague. Mm. Uh, he's my supervisor, so I report to him. Yeah. So I'd be telling him, I'm like, okay, I have this perfect CV for this position. But then it, it bothers me the fact that there's just one thing that bothers me. And then mm. I'll send it to him and then he'll say, no, send it to me, let me see. Yeah. So if I send it to him, the first thing that he will notice is it's been poorly scanned. Mm -hmm. And then you say, no, 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 no. I, I see why you have put this CV aside because all, all things come to play when it comes to a CV. Yeah, yeah. We're not only looking at your skills and your qualifications and all of that. How neat is your CV? How mm. are you presenting it? Mm. If you have to scan it, scan it professionally, which is why we always encourage to even save it in PDF because then you have uh, typed it and then saved it in PDF format. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. if you're going to capture it and then the camera paper is bent there, then you've just decided to scan it just like that. It's not, it's not professional looking. Wow. And Did also saving, sorry not to cut you, also saving your CV with your name. The name. Do not just save your CV as curriculum vitae because I will give you a hint <laughs> of what we go through as recruiters. Yeah. When we're recruiting for a particular position, say mm -hmm. I'm recruiting for an accountant position. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to create a folder mm -hmm. of uh, potential candidates. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through applications and every, every CV that I'm coming through, I'm saving it in, in the folder. So the best thing that I want is if that one name stands out to say this name this CV belongs to this particular person. I want yeah. to be able to just go to my folder and search for it by your name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now if you're going to save your CV as CV, and then now you're giving me the work of starting to look for, to say, I saw a CV, CV. I for saw a Emmanuel, CV. but Ima which one was it? was it? All of them are just labeled CV, CV, and then I have to start opening each and every single one. No, so every CV has to be saved 
with your full names mm. this helps recruiters because even now when it comes to placing you and all of those things mm. we just search for your name and it stands out and it's it's automatically there and for me i think i i, I have made it a religious practice mm-hmm. and whenever i'm working on cvs i'll write your full name mm-hmm. emmanuel dash chisalu dash cv dash i'll indicate the organization yeah say maybe yeah. mind power i'll put mp mm-hmm. dash 2022 mm-hmm. and then uh on the professional summary right before the professional summary i'll put what target position mm-hmm. i am mm-hmm. eyeing exactly so if say maybe the the advert was looking for a f- finance director mm-hmm. so i'm going to put target finance director exactly and everything that falls below that must be linked to that position to that position exactly now you see guys so this mm-hmm. is why I, I tell myself that i am a prolific cv writer <laughs> zambia's number one expert certified yes, cv yes, writer because yes, yes. i follow up the industry standards mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now you and i we've agreed on one one principle mm-hmm. um on, on LinkedIn, because I mean, every day we, we, we interact on LinkedIn. Yes. So yes. this is our first meeting, but it's like we've met. I feel like I've known you forever. Forever. Like so. <laughs> so you see yeah. how, 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 how technology has connected us in mm-hmm. real time, mm-hmm. even if we are far apart. Yeah. All right. But there has been one issue, mm-hmm. all right, that I've seen people reacting differently. Okay. That comes on referencing. All right. Yeah. So here is me who's um, been trained from this different school of thought mm-hmm. that references should not be included on a CV until a time the hiring manager requests for them. Requests for them. Now they are considering mm-hmm. to hire you. Am I right? Mm-hmm. So reason being number one, Perhaps your CV will be rejected. Perhaps your CV actually won't even reach the hiring manager. Mm-hmm. So think about those high profile references yeah. that you've included. Yeah. Uh, you've shared their, their sensitive information, private numbers, yeah. their emails. That makes a lot of sense. Actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if, for instance, your CV just ends up on the street, mm-hmm. um, our beloved mothers pick it up and they use it to wrap up the Vitumbua. <laughs> and then you are there you and like, i love those i eat them every day <laughs> <laughs> and then now you pick up this you know paper you're trying to read and see what is there mm-hmm. you find the cbs so commander yeah. uh, ceo for this lucrative mm, organization <laughs> the, your, you know their number is there where they are found and stuff like that yeah so is it necessary when you're applying for a job to include the references the references or perhaps Mm -hmm. you have to wait until a stage where you have been say maybe uh uh, you know exposed to the interview stage Mm -hmm. and then they're considering hiring you then you provide that that information regarding that i'm I'm even happy to acknowledge yeah. that i'm actually a student in that area okay because with me i was actually for the idea of yes it's okay to 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 put your cv and i think with the articles that i've written on my linkedin uh-huh. are more in line of who should you put as your references reference, all not right. necessarily should your references be there or should they not be there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but now coming to to what you're asking from what you have explained it actually makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. and this is information that i also got a hold of recently to say it's not really it's not really appropriate for the very reasons you've explained yeah it's not really appropriate so it's okay to to leave out um, your references until a particular stage mm-hmm. that the recruiters ask for this information okay. and also because I, I think i want to link this to be careful on who you add as as your references also yes. because it's very easy for you to be disqualified in the process even before any you go any further because maybe due to poor judgment you don't know who you've placed on your on your references mm. and then as i am recruiting i call one of these references and then instead of giving a positive view about you they mm. decide to give the opposite mm. of of what yeah of what they should say about you so automatically that paints now a different picture to say how do they have references that are speaking in this way yeah. but i feel like when it comes to yeah matters of uh, security and all of those things i think it's okay to only add your references at a point where the recruiters ask for them 
Really? And also just to protect these things, just like you had said, yeah. the economy is biting. People are applying for jobs for, for many reasons. Yeah. So you'll find you are currently in employment and then you put your current employer as your reference. And then while, while you are being recruited for that particular position, then your current employer is called mm -hmm. to say you have been placed on this CV as a reference. But yeah. your, your employer is thinking, ah, I'm working with this person there, okay? Then now it just stands out to your boss to say, oh, he's actually looking for employment because now even this person has called me and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay to leave uh, that information out until okay. a particular time that it is required. Brilliant, brilliant. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to build up on what you've said, um, should one then when applying mm -hmm. for a job say they're already in employment mm -hmm. should they include their private email or they could include their corporate email why are you including your corporate email so that they could see yeah, that, you know <laughs> uh, as you are bargaining like your actually you, because i've got an email <laughs> attached to me as, as ksm no 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i i really think i've, I've not come across uh, CVs that have corporate emails okay. yet, and, but I don't. I don't really think it's a good idea to put your corporate email. Put your mm -hmm. personal email because we want to find a way to reach you personally. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to reach you in your current employment. No, we're trying to reach you as Emmanuel, who we have shortlisted for this position. So yeah. now, if we're going to contact you on your capacity as whatever position you are currently serving, then mm -hmm. it it kind of defeats the purpose. So I think personal email is most is most appropriate. So. Uh my clients and also potential clients you've had not what what you come no include my work email work you, you've email. had I, the hiring manager is talking right now it's not so please I don't think so. please take note take note of the conversation we are having so next time when i eliminate or cut off you know excess fat mm -hmm. You because will. it comes it, it comes down to like business cards it's like putting your personal email on your business card yeah, yeah business is business so whatever numbers should appear there should be related to the current position that you are serving mm -hmm. then phone number that should be there should be your work phone number the yeah. email that should be there should be your work email, email so yeah. the, the your cv is now your personal so it's like your your personal business card so everything that should be there should be your own personal yeah details yeah you know i'm i'm, I'm having this exciting conversation with you I think this is information really that has been missing uh, in our society, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, more especially that uh, today everyone has got access to the internet. Yeah. There's just too much information distortion. So if we, we are interfacing with um, people like you who are actually involved mm -hmm. in talent acquisition, in the hiring process, mm -hmm. then definitely I do believe that um, our viewers, our listeners, also our clients out mm -hmm. there really could take note of this information and ensure that uh, they craft their CV in such a way that it meets the, the industry standards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of what you're looking for in your next mm -hmm. staff, your next team or your next employees. Mm -hmm. Now, Sibir, so uh, there's another issue here which has been floating around, more especially with digital disruption. Yeah. The applicant tracking system. Ah. And shockingly, I've never used that, eh? You've never used In that? In my entire <laughs> experience, I have not used, I've not yet had the opportunity to use, to use that. Look, I mean, every day when I wake up, I log in into LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these hiring managers, my colleagues, mm -hmm. so to say, who talk about the eight years like your yeah. cv should be eight years compatible mm -hmm. because if you put in all these fancy graphics designs and then it gets cut off yeah and now this closely links to the point that you're raised mm -hmm. that you don't need to create a generic cv ensure that you customize your exactly. cv for every opportunity that mm -hmm. you are applying for mm -hmm. so in light of the above I think last time I shared a story on first, uh, not Facebook, sorry, uh, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. where I designed the CV for a client. Okay. It was content enriched, mm -hmm. but for them that wasn't enough. They wanted to see, you know, these fancy colors, you, you, you the, know, borders, the borders, the borders, art, and stuff like that. But I used an industry accepted standard template. Okay. So this client busted me. Oh, I feel cheated. I've lost my money. 
you just stole from me yeah like there's nothing that I've that done. you've done i mean yeah. there's nothing that you've done that i could really appreciate mm-hmm. so as that conversation was running now reading through the messages that this client sent me i felt so demotivated i was even talking to god like i think this is not this this is not <laughs> something not for me <laughs> yeah like you know, like this is just when i'm starting and mm-hmm. then uh, mm-hmm. the client is busting me and stuff yeah. like that and, and 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 when i spoke to god uh, you know i'm very spiritual you know okay. i believe in the most high amen i told god <laughs> that god if this thing is not meant for me show me the signs that i don't belong to this this industry, this industry yeah but if truly this is where i belong then show me the signs as well you know what happened that same i'll send you the screenshots mm-hmm. all right that same client after three days came back to me apologizing to say look i've been shortlisted you see <laughs> for an interview yeah i'm so sorry the time when i received the cv i was in a bad mood i felt so cheated mm-hmm. i was also experiencing some other stuff so on and so forth mm-hmm. all right then i just said no it's it, it's all right i understand you're my customer and at the end of the day i would want you to have a perfect document that meets your career aspirations yeah now building on this ex- personal experience that i had what's so important on the cv is it the content mm-hmm. or how colorful the CV is <laughs> that you would consider as a hiring manager. It's definitely the content. We're not looking at colors that you've put on your CV. Yeah. What is your CV saying about you? Okay. Right. So it's it's about how you're bringing out your experiences, how you're bringing out your skills, how you're bringing out your qualifications. Uh, colors have nothing to do with it. Of course, layout has a role to play because mm-hmm. you need to know what to place before what. Like I had mentioned with the experience, yeah. it has to be in chronological order, starting mm-hmm. with your most recent. Yeah. So it's basically just about the concept. Well, we're, we're not looking at colors. I'm not looking to see if your CV has a touch of yellow, mm-hmm. or if it has a touch of blue. No. With me, I'm even much more comfortable just reading a CV that has no colors, no borders, no whatnot. But if the if the person is able to sell themselves in that cv mm-hmm. then i i should list them brilliant mm-hmm. awesome so as we run down the show i mean we could go on and we on could. there's and a lot there, there's, <laughs> there's a lot that needs there's to be lot. discussed in this area yeah and uh i'm 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 trusting that uh this is just an introduction mm-hmm. to exactly what we could essentially it described as an anatomy of a cv mm-hmm. and over time we're going to be building up yeah as and when you're available on a call or live in the studio mm-hmm. we could be doing the shoot okay. and also just sharing this information to the call mm-hmm. so that job seekers out there at least we could have done our part yeah. your part and my part yeah to distribute this information mm-hmm. so that it could remain up to them mm-hmm. on how to apply it and uh, if they want they could reach out to you or me uh, have their cv reviewed mm-hmm. of course not for free at a fee <laughs> we must make it clear i also have mixed views about the the, the fee but let's skip it <laughs> no no okay first of all look mm-hmm. let me tell you this right the reason why i'll charge you i want you to take ownership I want you to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I am a certified career analyst mm-hmm. and also professional CV writer. Mm-hmm. I had to invest in this journey. Exactly. So that I could be equipped with the knowledge, the competences, expertise, and also experience. So as a certified CV writer. Yes. I was having this conversation with a friend just a few days ago. Cross-examine me. Yes. <laughs> he was advertising for a friend yeah who was saying they do uh, cv writing and whatnot and then they had prices there to say from this much experience to this much maybe from 10 from 5 to 10 years of experience she was charging maybe let me just say within the range of 100 quarter and 500 quarter yeah. within that range but for that much experience mm-hmm. so then me and my friend now started having a conversation and i was advising him from a recruiter's perspective to say i, I don't feel your friend's writing skills are genuine Mm -hmm. in the sense that I highly refuse to believe as a recruiter Mm. that she could be redesigning a CV of a person who has five to 10 years experience in that range of money. Very cheap, To me, I I felt like it was too cheap. Uh So with me, it made me question the quality of what she is going to produce. 
to say how are you advertising to write a CV for a person with this much <laughs> with this much experience at such a low cost. So my friend's response was, no, it could be maybe because everyone is doing it and then maybe it's competition. So she's trying to she's mm. trying to cut down on costs. And then with me I said it with me I, I refuse to believe it's about cutting down on costs. Yeah. Do not compromise quality mm. because mm. of mm. competition. Praise it's, the it's, Lord. It doesn't make sense. If you know what you are about to deliver Preach on, good. preach on, sister, preach on. Charge 1,500 quarter because then you're going to back up to say, me, I'm charging this much because I know yeah. I am very good. I am certified. I am yeah. Emmanuel. Yeah. I know what I am doing. Yeah. But then if you're going to charge me 200 quarter for mm. five to 10 years of experience, nah. I don't know, maybe you can just address that. And I hope he's listening. He assured me that he's going to listen. So I want him to listen to, to your response. Thank you very much. You know, uh, I was a little bit nervous when you hit on the pricing yes. standards of CV writing. Mm -hmm. I thought perhaps you were going to look at the other side of the coin, like why should you charge? All right, well, that, that, I do have that, like why are we charging? Oh, oh, <laughs> of course, it's a service that I'm but, providing anyway. <laughs> All okay. right, mm -hmm. but, but, but realistically speaking, first of all, um, I am a professional, mm -hmm. well-trained, who understand mm -hmm. the industry very well. I must make mention that um, I also work full time for Office of the Auditor General. Okay. As a senior performance auditor in mm -hmm. charge of performance audits, environmental okay. audits, and sustainable development audits. Okay. And you know what that means? Mm -hmm. I literally audit every government institution. Exactly. Yeah. Audit their performance. You are the people I need to. You don't want HR outsourcing services. We'll talk about that. Okay. Cool. <laughs> of the cameras. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I have been exposed to a variety of industries. Mm -hmm. uh, the public sector, the civil society, the private sector. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, these small in, in medium enterprises. Exactly. Or so, you know, simply put, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Because mm -hmm. when I'm undertaking my audits, Basically, I'm using a whole of government approach mm -hmm. where I bring in all key stakeholders on board. Okay. So I understand exactly what is happening in each and every sector, mm -hmm. in each and every industry. So when I'm crafting your CV, that's the value I am bringing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you apply, say, for an accounting job as mm -hmm. a financial director, Okay. For this particular ministry, institution, or company, mm -hmm. I've already interacted with that industry before. I understand the language that they speak. Mm -hmm. And as a certified career analyst and a trained CV writer, mm -hmm. what I'm bringing to you is the value, enhancing your content. Mm -hmm. And as per industry standard, I'm going to charge you a fee that is consumer it mm -hmm. to the service I'm providing. I'm providing. So for me, I'll never charge anyone 100 kwacha. That's, that's, that's just downgrade. Like, look, <laughs> like I'm telling you, like, just give me, I know you're busy, so mm -hmm. let me arrange your document and then I'm going to send it back to you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you a reasonable fee, all right, mm -hmm. based on the industry standards and the value that I'm attaching, attaching to, that, to that, Yeah. based on the time that I've spent practicing, mm -hmm. the knowledge that I'm bringing to your document and the experience that I'm exposing you to mm -hmm. based on your target industry. All right. Mm -hmm. So you have to prepare your pocket. You have to prepare your wallet. Yeah. All right. Because I want you to invest in your career. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel it that as you are applying for a high earning job. Yes. You have yes. to invest this much. So that we begin anticipating on the returns mm -hmm. on your investment. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's an all-go area. You come to me, I don't negotiate actually. So you come <laughs> to me, 100 prices. kwacha, 200 kwacha, I'll say, look, I don't have the time. Yeah. I'm always fully booked because I know the value that I bring on the table. Mm -hmm. When I write you a CV, okay, I, I usually don't like guaranteeing, but within my heart, I know that when I write you a CV, you're going to get an interview call. Yeah. But what happens after that, between you and the recruiter, is for, your yeah it, it, it's your business for mm -hmm. me as long as you've been called for an interview that's 100 percent success rate because mm -hmm. the purpose of a cv 
is to get you inside and i feel like that that's interview. something that needs to be to be made very clear because i feel like even when job seekers and all these people are asking for advice in terms of cv yeah. it's like they're asking for advice in terms of a cv that will get me the job yes but then those are those are two different steps a cv will only get you to the interview interview yeah. from the interview the cv has done its part mm -hmm. it's spoken from for you and then from the interview now it's your turn to do your part yeah. convince me that what i have seen in the cv mm -hmm. is what you possess yeah. because there's people that will have powerful cvs and go through all these cv writers mm -hmm. and have the cv that will get them that interview mm -hmm. but when they get to the interview they can't express themselves yeah they can't talk they can't bring out what's in their own cv absolutely so i feel like those are points that should be made very 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 clear and as, as a hiring manager i would advise you that perhaps you encourage say maybe people that would come to you would mm -hmm. want their cvs revamped Mm -hmm. okay it's always important just like the way we are regulating every industry mm -hmm. uh, say accounting we've got zika yeah human resource we have uh, Zerim, Zerim, yeah. Zerim, mm -hmm. uh, marketing uh, law mm -hmm. so on and so forth mm -hmm. even as they are looking for someone to revamp their cv first of all the question that they should ask someone who's presenting an opportunity to revamp their cv mm -hmm. Show me your qualifications. Yeah. Okay. Are you yeah. trained in this area? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What experience do you have? Have you worked before? Yes. Do you understand the mind of the hiring manager? Mm -hmm. Do you understand the, the hiring landscape? Mm -hmm. So if someone, because they've been stuck, they can't do anything, then just think of something like, okay, let me just start beautifying CVs. CVs. And then you hire them to beautify your CV. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like it that. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. So you have a responsibility as a job seeker mm -hmm. all right even as you are thriving or rather striving to thrive mm -hmm. to land your dream job mm -hmm. uh, die a little yeah spend yeah. a little yes find the right person who's got the industry experience mm -hmm. to revamp your document you know when you come to me it's a it's a whole lot of a process yeah. we have to sit down we talk i send you a working paper you you provide me with information mm -hmm. i like i gun you down mm -hmm. look i don't want you to share your responsibilities give me your achievements your areas of expertise mm -hmm. what value what value what yeah. makes you think you're qualified for this role mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for you to come to me you've got a deeper conviction that i'm well suitable yeah to apply to for apply. this job exactly so now tell me why do you feel that why way? do you feel that yeah. way so that when you give me that information i'm going to synthesize that information mm -hmm and put it right on that career marketing document and it becomes it easy for you to even come and and now present yourself with that cv that you've had revamped because i feel like mistakes that job seekers are making is they just go to someone to design their cv yes and then that cv is sent back uh -huh. and then i'm here now impressed by a cv that has been revamped uh -huh. i invite you for interviews and you can't even talk because you don't know your own cv yeah because it's been revamped by someone else, by someone else. so i've had situations where i would even have to ask a person i'm interviewing to say did you write your cv mm. because clearly you you sound like you do not even know what's in your own cv yeah and that's where all these things mess up there's a connection between your cv and your interview up you to have to exactly the all the way to the to the end so the two have to be connected well so, um, it's been an incredible interview mm -hmm. a discussion a conversation discussion, yes <laughs> that uh, we've really had i think these are problems that are uh, most of um, job seekers uh, facing yeah facing when that entry level you're already in the industry you mm -hmm. think seeking of changing industries or you just want to grow and progress mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless this information is shared to cover for everyone who is in the industry mm -hmm. looking for opportunities yeah. so as your closing uh, remarks perhaps last but one question that mm -hmm. i would ask you as we wrap it down in your own view and perspective what makes a great cv one that meets the qualifications and the skills and the description of what the position you're applying for has mm -hmm. that is what i'm looking for all right mm -hmm. i'm not looking at at uh, your teaching experience when you're applying for a human resource position yeah. i'm not looking at your banking experience when you're applying for an accounts position mm -hmm. no I am looking at what do you have to bring what value do you have to bring to the table for the position that I am recruiting for mm -hmm. yeah basically that's what I'm looking for amazing mm -hmm. amazing and uh, as the last and final question in the 21st century where the world of work has become so competitive than 
ever before. Ever before. <laughs> How should graduates? I, I usually focus on graduates. Mm. Yeah, cuz that's And I feel like I have the most following from graduates. Yeah, on my LinkedIn. <laughs> like look, these people like they just want to land their first Yeah, job. yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's so true. so they just want to connect to everyone who, yeah. who's in the recruiting space. Mm -hmm. Anyone mm -hmm. who's talking about opportunities, yeah. who's giving advice about mm -hmm. how they could secure their first job but i just want grow. to advise them on that to be very 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 careful uh -huh. especially on places like linkedin yeah not everyone that has an hr title next to their name yeah. is actually practicing hr yeah and not everyone that has that hr title is actually in hr mm. there's others that are there maybe just to defraud these students because it's yeah. very easy for me to just come up and put a position to say i'm in hr and i've noticed people that are in hr get the most following yeah. because of the same thing that you have explained to say you have graduates who are desperate for jobs so they are out there inboxing each and every single person that has the title of hr yeah but it's not everyone that's practicing so i just want them to be extra careful with who they reach out to mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. terms of i need help for a job and i want to encourage them to say the minute you reach out to someone and then their first advice is how much are you willing to give me to get yeah. this job run do not do not even tolerate them any tabani, further mwambira, do, not, tabani, tabani, tabani. do not tolerate <laughs> you if you come to me I will, I will never ask you to pay me to say give me yeah, this much no yeah. so they should they need to be very careful run away mm -hmm. run away run away yeah brilliant I, i'm glad that you've raised that point mm -hmm. so that um as this podcast reaches out to them mm -hmm. they will know that despite their situation and how desperate they are mm -hmm. they don't need to pay anyone no 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 to get through to get this. through no a, a genuine recruiter will never ask you to pay yeah. something but of course for me as a cv writer you have to pay me to write <laughs> your cv so the, draw the distinction anyway no. all right so <laughs> then how should these graduates mm -hmm. all right uh, and young professionals position themselves to end their place in a competitive corporate world and it's, it is very very competitive focus on building yourself all right really be, focus must really be placed on building yourself mm -hmm. even before you get into the work into the work environment yeah do many things that will there's many 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 courses that can be done online yeah so just basically focus on self-development mm -hmm and uh, focus on acquiring as many skills as you as you are able to to acquire communication skills teamwork uh, leadership skills all of these skills because when when you come to me as a graduate yes i'm not looking at the fact that you have previous experience because you yeah. don't i'm looking at are you able to work as a team mm -hmm. if i put you in a situation where you work as a team are you able to work as a team yeah. how creative are you mm -hmm what incentives do you put in place in in terms of when you're faced with a situation how do you, which is why for me my structured questions for interviews for graduates is usually how do you handle yourself if you find yourself in such a situation situational yes, questions yes exactly because mm -hmm. i'm assessing you based on what are you going to bring to the table in that situation because you have no skill you have no mm -hmm. sorry you have no experience rather to present to me so now i'm more interested in how are you going to handle situations that you will obviously face which which brings me to the point that i raised to say be ready to work be don't just sit to work. and work and wait to say kindly the job will come mm. as you are preparing yourself be ready to work not where we place you in a situation now you can't even work as a team you no so be ready to work that is the number one advice to graduates be ready, ready to, to work, work. Mm -hmm. awesome ladies and gentlemen that was Sibia Sokumwenda, passionate with expertise in hiring, interviewing, recruiting, helping job seekers craft effective job strategies mm -hmm. to land their dream jobs. Yeah. Sibia so, thank you very much for featuring on the Mind Power Career Talk it podcast. It's a pleasure. I look forward to coming back. Hey, hey, hey. I have a lot to say so please bring me back. <laughs> Actually um uh, with my team out there. Mm -hmm. We've already agreed that you're going to be our resident guest. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Because this information mm -hmm. has to be shared. Yeah, it does. We need to preach this gospel. Mm -hmm. 
until next time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. From your host, Emmanuel Chisalu, certified career analyst, professional CV writer, and job search strategist, I'm out. See you in the next episode. <laughs>